Texas State's new head coach promises to light up the scoreboard and a few raging Cajuns opting out of the Independence Bowl. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Sunbelt. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. I host Afternoons on Sports Radio 105.5 WNSP in Mobile, Alabama, covering the South Alabama Jaguars. And prior to that, hosting Mornings on 103.7 The Game, covering the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. Texas State finally got around to introducing their new head coach. I'm going to screw these up numerous times, I'm sure. Jay, I'm sorry, I did it. I already did it. G.J. Kinney from Incarnate Word. Uh, they had announced that a few days ago, uh, but he's busy coaching a playoff team. Incarnate Word is in uh, the FCS playoffs. They're in the quarterfinals. So you got to gotta get a chance to get up to uh, San Marcos to uh, have time to hold a press conference. And yesterday was uh, the day. So yesterday we talked about ODU and Ricky Ronnie bringing in some high-powered offensive coaches from Fordham. And they were second in the nation in scoring. 49.5 points a game, or at least second in FCS. Number one in scoring, you got it. University of Incarnate Word, UIW. They average almost 52 points a game. I don't know why that took me so long to say that, but almost 52 uh, points a game. Uh, G.J. Kinney, I have to think about that to, to get it correct. He's only been a head coach one year. This is the only time he's been a head coach. Now, he does have an incredibly experienced quarterback in, in Lindsey Scott Jr. He's had, I mean, he's played forever. All right, he, and I follow this because he's from Baton Rouge. And for some reason, he had committed to Syracuse. And he's a little bit on the smaller stature size. He listed it. Well, now he's listed. Well, no, that's, uh, hold on a second. We need Lindsey Scott Jr. I'm looking at his, his dad came up uh, when I typed it in first. But uh, Lindsey Scott is 5'11", a little bit thicker now at 212 yards. But he was recruited to play Syracuse, and there may have been a coaching change at that time. And he went to LSU, and he was never going to play at LSU. He just wasn't. 5'11". He's not playing in most of the time in SEC. All right? I know we have Stetson Bennett and Bryce Young, but he just wasn't going to play it. They got a couple of guys to follow Joe Burrow and they battled it out and Lindsey Scott ended up going to McNeese and then is lighting it up now for Incarnate Word. And when I say lighting it up, I mean lighting it up. 55 touchdowns, 4,000 to 156 yards in the air. Let me see if we got rushing as well. Well, he also played at Nichols. I mean, I said McNeese. It was Nichols. He played at Nichols for a couple of years. Um, does he have any rushing touchdowns this year? He's got seven touchdowns. He leads the nation in touchdowns uh, combined at 62 touchdowns. And they can play three more games. They're going to play in the quarterfinals uh, this week. So, uh, Jay, again, I'm not getting it right. G.J. Kinney, I apologize. G.J. Kinney uh, is going to light up the scoreboard. Of course, that's what Jake Spavital was supposed to do as well for uh, Texas State. He has since taken the offensive coordinator at Cal, so he was not out of work uh, for very long, which we are happy about. Uh, we like Jake Spavital. Uh, but it is interesting that G.J. Kinney is from Texas. Uh, he likes the idea that um, Texas State is the only Sunbelt team 
in Texas, right? I mean, Louisiana's got two. Alabama's got two. Georgia's got two. Virginia's got two. See how that works out? So uh, he likes the idea that in Texas, this is the only Sun Belt team. I've got to believe it's the team that's the furthest west uh, in the conference. Uh, so very exciting news. Well, not news, but just the idea that they're going to light up the scoreboard. And, you know, don't overlook what this guy is going to do uh, at Texas State. Now, he's got his work cut out for them, for him, because of the way Jake Spavital was recruiting, just using the portal. So he's going to have to use the portal again, which is fine, but you got to go out and get some kids. You got to build the foundation, and the foundation is going to be the high school recruiting. You use the portal to, you know, make corrections, uh, fill in got, fill in needs that are a little bit more uh, immediate, and at the same time, he's got to do playoffs. And right now, apparently, it's only him. He, he's doing this whole thing on himself. So he's going to get ready for a playoff game, and he hasn't hired any assistant coaches yet. So that's going to be tricky for the next two weeks. He's got, the, he's got playoff games, he's got portal, and he's got national signing day in two weeks. Uh, but, again, I don't, say, don't discount this because look what JMU did in the Sun Belt, right? They lit up the scoreboard. Over in uh, the Sun Belt East, hammered Coastal Carolina, with or without Grayson McCall. James Madison led the conference with 37 points a game. They were one of the top defensive teams, but, uh, you know, they got banged up with Todd Santeo, the quarterback, which sounds like that wouldn't affect the defense, but it does because if your offense is not doing anything, then your defense is on the field all day long. Uh, and James Madison only gave up 21 points a game. So James Madison had a great year moving up from FCS to FBS. Now, this is just the coach moving up from FCS to FBS. Uh, and, you know, obviously he's got his work cut out for him in, in the West, right? Troy, 7-1. and one. John Summerall, the Sun Belt champions. Overall, 11-2. and two. South Alabama, 10-2, and 7-1 in the Sun Belt. Uh, we'll see if the Cajuns can bounce back. A uh, Southern Miss going to a bowl. We thought ULM was heading in the right direction, but they got to start again. And we'll see what Butch Jones is doing with a couple of good recruiting classes. It did not turn out well for him this year at three and nine overall and one and seven in uh, the Sun Belt. So they got their work cut out for him in Texas, but there's certainly, uh, what did, uh, was it Kef Ciardello? Are there like a dozen FBF schools or a dozen colleges? In, in Texas, it's not just A&M and the Longhorns, right? It's UTSA. It's Texas State. And, and UTEP. Uh, there are plenty of places to go to school, and there's plenty of talent uh, if you can find it. And with the transfer portal, you can turn things around very, very quickly. If I was... if I Again, I got to think about it. G.J. Kinney... I would be talking to his players first and see who he thinks he can keep and maybe who he doesn't want to keep, right? Deion Sanders went to Colorado and said, hey, some of you are going to have to go in the portal because I'm bringing my own. They were bad. Well, Texas State wasn't that very good either. Pretty good on the defensive side, not very good, uh, consistent or explosive on uh, the offensive side. So, G.J. Kinney, your new Texas State head coach. And again, quote, promising to light up the Sun Belt. All right, let's take a time out. We will be back. And uh, now we're getting this with the transfer portal, right? We're, this is what's going on uh, with the portal and the NFL draft. And guys are opting out not to play. Uh, in this case, uh, it is guys going to uh, the pros or entering themselves into the draft. And uh, the Cajuns are going to be a little bit shorthanded in Shreveport in the Independence Bowl against Houston. We will be right back after this. Message from LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. 
You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's incredibly easy to add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you have positions available. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz back with more on Locked on a Sunbelt, your team every day. So we do have some Cajuns and some pretty good Cajuns that have opted out. A couple of guys got invited to the East-West Shrine game. And they are not going to play in the bowl game, in the uh, in the uh, Independence Bowl. I could make a Shreveport joke right now, but I won't. <laughs> uh, Kevin Foote, I don't think this is uh, news that anybody doesn't have. But uh, Kevin Foote from the ad from the Advocate is the Acadiana Advocate. They will be without Michael Jefferson, their high-flying receiver, Andre Jones, their defensive end, and one more player who is not, Andre Landry, will not be eligible to play in uh, the bowl game. Not great for uh, the Cajuns, all right? When you're trying to play a team like Houston, you want <laughs> you want to be able to have it all. Uh, let's see here. Um, a Jones, 51 tackles, seven and a half sacks, plus two breakups. And Michael Jefferson, we may be able to find him on a different uh, statistic. Uh, one of the top receivers. He's actually from uh, Mobile. And uh, he will be out uh, as well. So, again, you have a lot of players that are not playing in bowl games for one reason or another. We talked about, you know, South Alabama is playing Western Kentucky. And Austin Reed, Western Kentucky's, you know, record-setting quarterback, has decided, I want to go to the transfer portal. Now, I guess we don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, Michael Jefferson and Andre Jones have already indicated that they are uh, not going to play uh, moving uh, forward uh, in the independence bowl. We have not heard that from, we have not heard that from uh, Austin Reed just yet. I'm sure the coach, despite being upset that he, going into the portal, if he wants to play, he's probably going to play. Let's see where Michael Jefferson was 10th in the, conference with 67 and a half uh, yards per ball game does average 15 16 yards a catch and he had 51 catches let's see where that ranks that ranks 14th and he had 810 yards that ranks ninth. so top 10 receiver or so in the uh, Sun Belt uh, had seven touchdowns for uh, the Raging Cajuns. And so now you are going to be, the Cajuns are going to be out without with one of their uh, big wide receivers and going to be without one of their big time uh, defenders in Andre Carter. Both those guys are going to the East West Shrine game and they will play in that and try to get ready for the pros. There's a big question going on. When do you open up the portal? And uh, that seems to be, we'll see if they cor make that correction. They opened up the portal right after the championship week. So a couple of things are happening, right? People are trying to get new spots. Uh, looking for playing time. 
if you look at the SEC, for example, a lot of from everyone from Alabama to AM to Florida, Arkansas, people are transferring out, not Georgia, because they still got games to go, or at least one. And, uh, you know, is the music going to stop by the time Georgia, you know, has players that want to transfer? I'm sure if you have some really good ones, someone's going to find room for them fast. But that's going to be an issue. And you also have people that are opting out because they don't want to risk it. Certainly, so I'm not sure where Andre uh, Jones or uh, Michael Jefferson are slated to be drafted. I'm going to guess day three, maybe day two, second round picks, second or third round picks. But guys like Will Anderson and Bryce Young, who are looking at, you know, top five picks, that's millions and millions and millions of dollars. So if Bryce Young and Will Anderson opt out of Alabama Sugar Bowl, uh, you can understand it. Some guys who are lesser, not that the money doesn't mean more to them, but it would seem to be an opportunity if I'm a day two or day three pick maybe I need to play in these all-star games being a bowl game. It's not an all-star game, but a bowl game and then play in the all-star game, which they are. Yeah. And maybe they can, you know, lift up their potential there, but at the same time, you're obviously uh, risking injury. So that is going to be uh, an issue with, and that's going to be an issue for, for players and coaches and, and teammates. I can only imagine you know, Will Levis still being considered a top pick quarterback wise. He's not playing in, I guess, at the Music City Bowl. I guess he's pretty banged up at that. So I didn't see anybody who was all that upset. And maybe we're just looking for, you know, people getting other chances, right? At, you know, Alabama may, you know, Bryce Young's not going to play. So everyone's looking forward to seeing who, you know, is up next. That's what happened with Mac Jones, right? Tua got hurt and Mac Jones looked. It looked okay. He looked really good against Auburn. I know they lost. He had a couple of interceptions. One wasn't his fault. Uh, and then uh, he looked really good against Michigan. Was it the Citrus Bowl? Something along those lines? Maybe the Citrus Bowl. So uh, we'll see what happens with the portal uh, moving forward. But, you know, the Cajuns are going to be without a couple of uh, key players against Houston in uh, the Independence Bowl. All right, here we go. Uh, we need to do, need to tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Dave Schultz wrapping things up on a uh, Thursday. Is that where we are? Thursday? On a locked on Sun Belt. We are expecting, we being me, <laughs> uh, to have coach of the, the JMU Dukes on Kurt Signetti for Friday's episode. And talk about, you know, the season and building a program and moving the program from FCS to FBS. And, you know, is there a be I'm sure there's better words to use than cockamamie, but I'm going to go with cockamamie uh, rule that not allows that doesn't allow JMU to go to a bowl game or even play in the Sun Belt Championship game. It's really outrageous. It's uh, stupid. It was something that I, as someone who covers South Alabama, was interested in seeing because. Well, he ended up getting it. At the time, we didn't know it was a, he was a banged-up uh, quarterback, Grayson McCall. He ended up getting injured. Uh, but we thought that JMU uh, would have a say uh, in not who wins the East, but, well, not only that, but who hosts the Sun Belt Championship game. And because JMU destroyed Coastal, what, 47-7, to Coastal has to go to Troy. Troy was psyched. Coastal, not so much although they did show up in the second half. Uh, but Troy ends up being the uh, Sun Belt champion. I think some of that, some of that, not all of it, but some of it had to do with uh, hosting the game. They were raring to go 
uh, at Troy. So we are looking forward to it. Again, scheduled to appear on Friday's episode of Lockdown Sunbelt is JMU coach uh, Kurt Segnetti. If you don't know his background, uh, he was on Nick Saban's original staff at Alabama and was had a big part of recruiting the 2008 class, someone named Julio Jones, among others, if you've heard that. Uh, he also apparently was on the NC State staff when he was offering this local Alabama kid a chance to play quarterback when everybody else wanted him to play either tight end or linebacker because he's built that way. And Phillip Rivers basically had a Hall of Fame-ish type career in the NFL. But the Auburns and the Alabamas at the time did not want Phillip Rivers to play quarterback. He has a little bit of an odd motion, right? We, we can all see that. But they took Phillip Rivers to NC State and he was raring to go. So we will hopefully have JMU head coach Kurt Segnetti on for Friday's episode. Until then, I'm Dave Schultz, your host. Thanks very much uh, for listening. You have been listening and in this case watching Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day.